Here we have a right triangle with angles of 15 and 75 degrees. We may know one of those three sides, x, y, or z, and we could be asked to find the other two. We may know one of the sides and be asked to find the area of this triangle. So this problem is similar to the problem we considered last time. The only difference is last time we had angles of 18 and 72 degrees. One way we can solve this problem is to look for trigonometric functions for 15 and 75 degrees. We can go to reference material and find those values. In fact, I posted a link below where I actually discuss how to find sines, cosines, tangents of 15 and 75 degrees. But here we would like to do it using geometry. In the last video, we took a right triangle for 18 and 72 degrees and reflected it over the side BC. Let's try to do the same thing here and see if it works. So we're going to get a bigger triangle, ADC. The angle on the right is going to be 30 degrees. And what we're going to do now is we're going to drop an altitude from point D. Give this DE. Notice the triangle on the right, EDC, has an angle of 30 degrees. So the other angle is going to be 60 degrees right here. And that means we have 30, 60, 90 degree triangle. And we really know everything about this triangle. So if you're not familiar with this triangle, I posted a link below where I discuss the properties of this triangle in the details. But what we need to know here is that the side of this triangle that is opposite of 30 degree angle, so in this case, this green side D is half of the hypotenuse. And in our case, hypotenuse is Z. And the other leg, CE, should be squared of three times larger than the side DE. That's what we're going to get. The next thing you would like to do is to find this segment AE, and that equals to AC, which is Z, minus CE, which we just found. If you look at the triangle on the left, triangle ADE, we can relate the sides of this triangle using Pythagorean theorem. And that relationship gives us relationship between x and z. So if you know z, we can find x. If you know x, we can find z here. And what we're really interested here is not x and z by themselves, but actually the ratio of x over z. So we can easily get it from here. We can find x over z squared by opening the parentheses here and rearranging the terms. And from that, we can find x over z by taking square root of the expression above. That's what we're going to get. So the next thing we want to do is to go back to our original triangle. And what we'd like to do is to find the actual ratio of y over z. Now, x, y, and z are related by Pythagorean theorem. And from that, we can find how to relate y over z via x over z. And that gives us this expression. Now, going back to trigonometric functions, if you want, we knowing that x is the opposite leg for angle of 15 degrees. So right here, we have the ratio of opposite leg to the hypotenuse and that's the sine of 15 degrees. For the angle of 75 degrees, x is adjacent leg. So x over z will represent of cosine of 75 degrees. When it comes to y over z, uh, things change. Whatever was adjacent leg become opposite leg. Whatever was opposite leg become adjacent leg. So sine and cosine here are gonna switch and we get cosine of 15 degrees and sine of 75 degrees. We can also find the ratio of x over y by dividing 
this and this. That's what we're going to get. And that is also a trigonometric function for angle of 15 degrees. It's a ratio of the opposite leg to the adjacent leg, and that is tangent. For the angle of 75 degrees, it's the ratio of the adjacent leg to the opposite leg, and that is a cotangent. Now we can go back to the reference material and check on trigonometric functions for 15 degrees and for 75 degrees. And what we find are the formulas of there probably differ from what we have here. The formulas you'll see there are actually somewhat simpler than this. The complication here is what's called nested square roots. So like here we have square root of 3 inside of another square root. First let's take care of the ratio of x to y. Here we have a square root of the fraction and denominator in this fraction has a square root. We can get rid of the square root by multiplying numerator and denominator by a conjugate of this current denominator. So we have 2 plus square root of 3. What we're going to do is multiply and divide by 2 minus square root of 3. Now, if you multiply this denominator, you're going to get 1. So our expression is going to simplify, and we can see that x over y equals to 2 minus square root of 3, which is much simpler. And that's what you're probably going to see in the reference material. Now, when it comes to x over z and y over z, you're probably going to see the formulas like this. It is easy to see that x over z here, this formula, and this formula represent the same number. What you need to do is just simply need to square them. Square this number and simplify, and square this number and simplify. And you will end up with the same number. Same thing is going for y over z. But more interesting question is if I know this and I don't know this, how can I go from here to here or from here to here? I left a link below where I actually go and show how to do it with cosine of 15 degrees. So if you're interested, you can go there and watch that. But for now, what I want to do is to actually talk about the different ways to calculate these ratios. x over z, y over z, x over y. Previously, we took this triangle and we reflected it over the side BC. Now we're going to do something different. We're going to take this angle of 75 degrees and split it into angles of 60 degrees and 15 degrees. So and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stop here and let you work on that. Figure out how to go from this geometric construction to finding the ratios of x to z, y to z, x to y. And if you find that, please post your solutions. Good luck!